Welcome back everybody to our second series of today. It's going to be Team Dignitas up against Team Empire. Empire, they're sitting pretty. They're 2 0 in Group B and Team Dignitas, well, 0 and 1, which sort of will maybe get a few people shaking their heads. They didn't play their full two game series yesterday against 4FC. They lost game one. Game two is going to be played later on tonight, actually after this two game series here. But Dignitas, they need to get themselves some points. They need to recover because right now. They're not looking too good in this group here. It's after one game, though. I think it was just more like how they played in that game one, one where they didn't look too convincing. But we're going to hop ourselves into game one of Dignitas vs. Empire. I am Gods, and as always, is joining me is Luminous Inverse. How are you, Lumi? I am doing great. So, judging from the way that Team Dignitas played yesterday and the way that Team Empire played today, it seems like Team Empire will get an easy 2-0, but it's hard to say whether Team Dignitas just had an off day. I believe yeah. they were playing with their standing yesterday. And they and are once again today, though. Okay, so Team Dignitas is having trouble getting the full roster together, and yep. Team Vampire does not have that kind of trouble. They are looking sharp and looking strong, so they're going to open up with Chen, Rubik, Gyrocopter for Team Vampire playing the Dire Side. Team Dignitas, Nyx Assassin, and Darkseer on the Radiant. Yeah, uh, Dignitas playing with Zai, who's actually playing on the Stay Free team in MLG, one of the sort of second, uh, the second or third best teams in that MLG tournament. Um, and uh, they're missing Fogged. Fogged didn't play yesterday, he's once again not playing today. So he's kind of a, to me, one of the more influential players, playing that either solo mid or offlane solo role for them. But it's still a very quality team of, of individual players when you have people like Korok as well as 1437. Infinity, one of the uh, better sort of NA Dota players who hasn't really had a big breakout yet, but... We'll see how they look to do here. They really like picking Nyx Assassin. They've been play playing this hero a lot in MLG, and they're going to try it again here in the We Play Dota 2 tournament. Yeah, it's definitely a very good hero against, you know, fairly squishy supports such as Chen and Rubik, but at the same time, he doesn't really offer you much in terms of a defense or a pushing. So, uh, in, in that aspect alone, if, let's say, Team Empire decide to do a 15-minute push, the Nyx Assassin by himself, he's going to have a little bit difficult time dealing with that one. Queen of Pain is going to get selected by Team Team Toss, and I imagine that's going to be Korok's hero, because that's a very Korok-esque hero. He did have a good time on Queen of Pain yesterday, though. So getting solo killed by a range creep, uh, if you remember that one. Else he was running away at, you know, 1 HP. Yep. Well... <laughs> that was, that was uh, Dignitas' woes from yesterday. They're going to look to turn things around here. And as far as picking up the early Queen of Pain, I feel this is something which, while being a strong lane dominate, it's just a hero that just doesn't really move well in towards the mid game and especially against lines with a lot of disables but right now empire it's just a rubik telekinesis you're not looking at any sort of strong heroes okay. to deal with queen of pain just yet there's one more now clockwork yeah. this is i mean clockwork's gonna be tanky teams always go for you have a chen with hand of god you have god you have mech this is it's just hard for queen of pain to actually secure kills in general i feel come mid game time yeah, normally I say Clockwork as a fourth pick here isn't looking too good for Team Empire because aside from Gyrocopter, you really lack any damage output. Clockwork, a true great disabler, but unlike Batrider who de gives you some decent mid-game damage or a Lone Druid or a Prophet that gives you good late-game damage, Clockwork initiates, a lot of times just dies, and doesn't give much to the team. But if you look at Team Dignitas, well, they're not firing you know, a great shotgun back at you or anything right now, so you're, you could get away with kind of having not much damage, at least for now. Alright, well, uh, Dignitas, uh, they need, uh, I guess, a more stable carry of their own. Is that, and I think that's the one thing they've sort of been lacking. Here. Queen of Pain likely be played by Infinity, but they're up against a Gyrocopter going towards the late game. There's still Alchemist in the pool, and I'm wondering if they start considering something like a hard carry Alchemist, or if they go for more uh, sort of early to mid game centric play. Yeah, that's a good question as well. Darkseer definitely allows you to set up a ton of things. Jakira, for example, becomes a lot better of a support when you have Darkseer on the on the ranks. Um, again, Leisler getting banned out, so that's definitely one of uh, the more stable choices. I wonder what's going to be picked up. I feel like this is one of those teams that maybe uh, can draft like Mineski, just pick two semi-carries like Queen of Pain and Shadow Fiend, for example, and then just kind of try to run the tables with, with something like that. Uh, or maybe they'll go back for Morphling. Uh, I heard Korok could play that hero quite well. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it's the Korok hero they haven't picked up yet. It's often they sort of leave it to last and figure out what is not going to get countered too well. Like if there's not a lot of disables on the field, they maybe pull out something like a Storm Spirit. Um, otherwise, we've seen him play heroes like Ursa as well. Uh, he plays that carry role, but will often pick these snowbally type intelligence based heroes like Storm Spirit, like Queen, Queen of Pain as well. Maybe here we even put Korok onto, if it, depending on where, where and how they want to lane things. Uh, and that's where I feel Alchemist doesn't really suit his playstyle. Even if they pick something like Alchemist, it may not even be Korok who's actually playing him. Mm -hmm. We saw Korok play Queen of Pain still with me yesterday, so yeah. that 
makes me think that he might play Queen of Pain again, but well, there's a the Troll Warlord, so suddenly things really change. The damage is gonna come out quick and fast, and uh, Clockwork can disable some, but when a, once the BKB comes out on Queen of Pain, Troll Warlord, and possibly even Darkseer, suddenly Team Fight can get a little bit sketchy for Team, uh, team Empire. Yeah, I like, I think, I like this from Dignitas. They're looking to have a really strong early game landing stage. Darkseer, uh, not not going to lose any 1v1 matchups. Can get zoned out a little bit, but it's going to be a Rubik Gyrocopter, it looks like, with Chen in the jungle. So he can maybe actually get contest the lane a little bit, cause Gyrocopter some problems. And then you have Queen of Pain mid, Troll Warlord potentially in the safe lane. This is just all around lane dominance from Dignitas. If they can get that early game lead, they're a team who will just not let the other team catch up and get back into the game. All right, Jakiro ban out here to protect against a big AoE, and OD wow. ban out to protect oh, the Queen of Pain. OD wasn't actually banned or picked at all. Yeah. I'm surprised to see that. Yeah, I guess, I mean, Scandal definitely could play that hero, but it's not very much to his play style, yeah. so it's it's fairly a boring kind of a lane controller. Now, with the Queen of Pain on the field and the Puck being banned out, I wonder what Scandal's going to pick for himself on this last one. There's not many other heroes that's really good against Queen of Pain. Uh, you could go the complete other route and say, alright, you know what, I'm just going to tank the Queen of Pain harass and, you know, beat her at the other stage of the game. So something like a Dragonite would actually do yeah. okay here. And there you go. Alright, Dragon Knight it is, so Scandal going to be forced to mass bottle crow in the mid lane, just look to sit back and, like you say, soak up the harass, so you can still confirm alright against as Dragon Knight if you're just bottle crowing non-stop, and that's definitely what we'll have to see come out from uh, the DK at mid lane. As for Dignitas, it looks like they just need their other support to go to the Nyx Assassin. You mentioned Jakira, which does get banned out, so they're going to have to go for something a, a bit more um, out, of, out of the box, I guess, your Crystal Maiden maybe, your Ventral Spirit. Uh, there's still an Enchantress even in the pool if they want to go for a jungle, but they're going to go Keep with the Light, actually. I, I Very like this interesting. Pick. Yeah. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what this pick is trying to do. If, for example, they pick Crystal Maiden, for example, they could just go offensive trial lane and really shut down a fairly defensive, weak dual lane of Rubik and Gyrocopter. Would this, you know, in my, I still think they could go offensive trial lane. Illuminate offers up a ton of uh, magical damage. You could just Illuminate, range slow, and then just stun uh, with your Impale, and pretty much anybody that gets stunned is just dead. Well, Dignitas do have, even with the Keeper of the Light, I think they still do have the option to go offensive trial lane. Uh, you can put the Queen of Pain even as a, a safe lane here against yeah. against Clockwork and put Darkseer mid against DK if they want to go that way. Otherwise, putting Queen of Pain mid, Darkseer safe lane, one win against Clockwork works just fine as well. So I think their 1v1 matchups are, are pretty decent that if they want to go offensive trial lane, they definitely can. Yeah, 1437 today and similarly yesterday, draft very good lanes. Like generally, we, we look at lanes and how they match up against each other. You say Team Dignitas should win those lanes. Yesterday, they didn't win those lanes. That's where things went wrong. So, hopefully today for 1437 and Dignitas' uh, sake, they could line things up correctly and make sure that uh, all going all uh, going according to plan. All right. Well, uh, over on the Radiant team, we'll uh, introduce the players and heroes now that we are in a bit of a pause. It is going to be Team Dignitas. We'll have Zai, the stand-in playing the Dark Sea, Infinity playing Queen of Pain, Korok on Troll Warlord, 1437 on Nyx Assassin, and then finally it's PPD, Peter Pandan, playing the support Keeper of the Light. Alright, here for Dire Size Empire, doing so well, so far so well today here. Uh, opening up where their Group B performance with 2-0 you know, over 4FC, but they're going to be playing now Team Dignitas. Scandal is going to be playing your Dragonite. We have Vanscore playing Shen. Silent is going to be your Gyrocopter. We have Fly Dota playing Rubik, and the last player who hasn't picked your hero yet is going to be Mag, and if I remember correctly, it's going to be a Darkseer offlane. That's a clockwork. Uh, clockwork offlane, <laughs> yeah. excuse me. Darkseer on Radiant side. Darkseer versus Darkseer. Duplicate hero mode. That'd be something. Ooh, inside matchup. Um, Darkseer? Uh, I, Are we talking about Darkseer versus Darkseer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think Darkseer wins it. <laughs> no, player-wise. Oh, uh, between Mag and... Zai. Zai? I'd say Mag. Well, pretty confidently. Zai ca coming over recently from the, I think, Heroes of New Heroes of Newth and... Uh, He's still adjusting to Dota 2. He's uh, had some ups and downs, I'd say, in the MLG tournament, but he's played pretty well there, all in all. You know, whenever we say players are coming over from Heroes of New York, why no players coming from League of Legends? I don't know. Because League of Legends, they have a they have a mode which is used at their championship series where there's actually duplicate heroes on the map. Like, if it gets to a game 5 in a 5 game series, they play like a blind draft, so you draft, you can still ban heroes, but you pick your heroes without knowing what the other team has picked. And it's the stupidest mode ever. That sounds absolutely retarded. Yeah, it's, it's completely retarded. And then they had a game with, like, both teams having, like, two or three of the same heroes because they just, like, draft the same, like, really strong heroes. And it what ensued was a stupid as, as hell game five. 
I guess the theory is like you, hey, it's you're on equal footing because you can both pick the same heroes, but it's it's completely retarded. I don't know. Cool. I, I remember just I remember hearing about that because it was all over Twitter with like different people, like compl players complaining about it, organizations complaining about it. Slasher was saying, "What the fuck are they doing?" And so if Slasher is complaining about it, you know something's wrong. But, is uh, Slasher a pro League of Legends? No, League Slasher League. is a uh, the Gamespot news editor guy. He's okay. somewhat uh. Infamous in the esports scene. We are going to see 1437. They find the Chen here. Uh, it looks like no follow up for the Impale Stone. It was a five man rotation from Dignitas through the uh, enemy jungle, but Infinity going to be. Looks like he's maybe mid. He's been uh, pulled Tango's as well south with a Null Talisman. The battle and uh, I think they're going to be sending Zai just standard to the offlane, or maybe just straight into the jungle if they want to abandon this. I don't. Hmm. I don't really like the idea of abandoning it. it Blame, but yeah. it seems like they are going to do it. It's a weak dual lane. Like, as, and right now, it's just a solo gyrocopter. Silence up there alone. Rubik's going to make his way up top, but it feels it's like a... Zai should contest this, at least harass to start things off. I mean, I, I still don't understand not going offensive trialing, but, you know. Maybe Korok is just more comfortable with this defensive lane play. So I actually have never seen Korok in offensive trialing, so, like, ever. Yeah. So maybe that's it. All right. And even when in MLG they do offensive trial lanes, Korok would play the safe lane solo. Like they'd yeah. put Infinity in this offensive trial lane, or they'd put Fogged in the offensive trial lane, and then have Korok play either safe lane solo or solo mid. Maybe. Meanwhile, we're gonna see Mag doing this gonna stand. Well, what is now becoming a standard kind of block? He's gonna actually let loose a creep now, as he is gonna receive a little bit of a free farm under his tower. So Korok, well, nothing he can do too much about that. Yeah, this is this is unavoidable. The one time, remember that one game. Where the Darkseer really, like randomly ran to those trees, he actually ate a Tango to prevent that from happening. So I remember we were, we were both ah. saying like, "What's that Darkseer doing? Like, what the hell's up with that?" And Envy messed me after the game and like Darkseer uh, ate a tree to prevent Clockwork uh, doing that little trick. Top I thought that was really cool. Attack. Okay. I didn't, I didn't notice the, the tree eating, but yeah, that that does make sense. That's one way you can actually counter this uh, Clockwork Cogs trick. Is uh, I'm not sure which tree you eat, but uh, you can go there with the hero, like who or with any hero before the creep spawn and prevent it from happening. At the same time, I mean, how big of a deal is it actually? Clockwork is, you know, he's got his level two. Yeah. Well, but... having Rocket Flare is pretty nice because that means he can block this uh, neutral camp from spawning, the neutral yeah. pool camp. You have to fire it over as the camp is yeah. spawning, which is, you know, if you practice it enough times, you should be able to get it. Should be a hundred percent after. Like, I mean, these are pro players. This is Bag well, Man. I believe in him. I seen Brax like he's he's sending it now. Oh, it Easy. It was blocked anyways by the ogre. Yeah. <laughs> You but, say uh, you say these are pro players, but uh, you know, pro right player right. makes mistakes. And not and not every pro player like knows every little trick. Like there's there's so many things that you can do in Dota. Um, but I saw Brax from I remember him at, at TI TI three in the loser bracket match they won. He spent the first eight minutes of the game just constantly spamming Rocket at level one and blocking every single pool camp against Mouse Sports. And Mouse had like two supports who had I think it was like a Keeper of the Light and Nyx Assassin, and they got no levels because they had no pool camp. And they had these sentry wards ready, and they're like, hey, how do we get gold? <laughs> That's where you go gank mid, I guess. I don't know. But uh, in this game, uh, Max definitely doing a good job now. He's going to see himself a ton more experience under this tower. Let's see if 1437 and Korok are zone him away from experience range. A little bit difficult now that creep wave is going to be here. But they're going to try. Korok poking a little bit ahead. So it's 1437. Good enough, I feel like. Yeah. Like he's missing a couple of CS. Well, it's the, the Chen who's farming away on the Empire side in the jungle, and that's something where he gets some fast levels, now he's going to come help him push. Uh, we'll see if fast team on tower go down. This is where Dark's in the jungle, he's not really defending his tower, hasn't... I, I guess it's really hard, you can't do so anyways as a level 3, level 4 Darks here, if Chen decides to come, but... Nyx is going to rotate top, so he just wants to get some experience, uh, not too worried about the farm, he just wants the levels that this tower is going to help him get. Well, he's gonna try to get it, but here comes Fly Dota with oh, the no. lift. He does not have Spike Carapace, and he's in huge What's trouble right now. Rocket Barrage is gonna seal the deal. Well, no experience for him. Tier 1 tower is gonna go down regardless of Fly. That was... I don't know. That was just weird. That was something he should not be even considering there. He doesn't have Carapace. Even if he has Carapace, that's a terrible so idea. Yeah. yeah. That was... He should have just waited the tier 2 tower, because the push was gonna maybe continue. Or even if the push didn't continue, the creep wave was gonna push out, so... <laughs> He got I think, way too I, greedy. I think what he did not expect was uh, Fly to actually have boots of speed over on him, and he doesn't obviously have the boots, so Fly's gonna walk back in the end. It's, oh my goodness, he's gonna make the same mistake. We're gonna see Rocket Barrage. Good split coming out from Silent, and, and well, there you go. I mean, the first time being surprised, that's fine, but the second one, that's just. Yeah. 
This this is uh, some weird play coming out from 1437, and this is a support player who trained in trying to play with LG Ant, and uh, to me was one of the standout players on that LG Ant team, but his decision making so far this game has been far from perfect. Yeah, suddenly it's two kills up top, two towers up top, well I imagine this one's not going to get denied, and you got to be careful, because 1437's back for a little bit more, and <laughs> yeah. He's really gonna go for that denier. I don't think he's gonna get it. So Silent not gonna get the last one on this tower, but still good enough. Yeah, still a bit of enough. bit of missed gold, but it's still Empire who have just got themselves a huge early game advantage all of a sudden. Infinity Queen and Painted Mid lanes up to twenty three CS to the fourteen of Dragonite. The kind of I guess CS advantage you'd expect in this one v one matchup, but DK's doing alright, like hasn't died, got okay CS, just constantly bottle crowing. And uh Infinity just needs it's not so much He's not doing anything wrong here, but as a Queen of Pain, it's really hard to do much more than dominate your lane. You, how's he actually going to be able to help out the team when Chen gets a fast level 6, when there's going to be a mech up? This is just a hero Queen of Pain who's very easily sort of uh, made irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, normally you say, or normally see in a pub game, for example, she gets a double damage rune and gank the other lanes and get a double kill and she snowballs. But yeah. in a in a kind of high skill game like this, that's not really going to happen. Uh, you, you go off the lane scandal, turns level 6, and your tower is going to suffer like a thousand of his HP, which is not really, uh, you know, a, a fair exchange for Infinity attempting a game. game but yep. well, Scandal uh, now going to deny even a couple more creeps on the middle lane. Yep, uh, he's he's doing not too bad here. 18 and 2 CS now. I love Jarkov to silent. He's just not afraid even to stay top with tier two ta two towers down. Uh, Fly Dota is going to do a pull with the Rubik to pull the creep way back a bit, and well, even with two towers push, there's still not a lot of farming experience for 1437 at top lane. He's just level four for the time being, and. Mag is still blocking this neutral camp. I don't know if this has spawned in the last four minutes. It has but... not spawned at all. I check every single minute. Nice. I, I love it. This is this is why Nixus hasn't had to rotate top as well. Maybe try and push himself out a bit too far. PPD keeps going back, keeps pinging in, says, God damn it, where are my neutrals? He's level four though, so he can actually kill off big camps um, if he stacks them. But at the same time, he's fighting over the jungle with the darks here. Yeah, he, basically what he has been doing is stacking the big camp. Uh, like you said over here, and then just illuminate blasting uh, whenever he gets a chance to. So it's one of the few supports that perhaps is not as affected by something like this. Uh, at the same time, Mag is somehow constantly getting <laughs> a creep wave under his tower, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, because you shouldn't really be pushing out. Clockwork's going to TP mid. Scandal's being initiated on here. It looks like 1437 and Zai did manage to get a kill there. Mag with the TP, and he didn't actually have level 6 anyways, but he thought maybe he could try and turn that one around. Not going to happen, and... Dignitas get themselves on the scoreboard. They're actually not as far behind as they could. It's about a 2,000 gold lead for Empire, but considering this is two towers to nothing, it's actually Dignitas out farming Empire for the, for the most part in this early game. But that's what you'd expect with their strong lanes. They have a Queen of Pain mid, Troll Warlord, who's a lane dominator in his own right in the uh, safe lane, and then Darkseid jungling away. Somewhat, I guess, countering the Chen jungle farm. But it's... Yeah, and obviously, Jarokaku not getting as much farm because he was more pushing and stuff, yes. so... I mean, Team Empire, Team Empire, I think they're in a, a fine position. Sure, they're not really ahead quite a bit, but if you see that Silent uh, using his early game goal, going for just small things, like a Ring of Aquila, going to be going for things like a Helm of Dominator, that's a ton of armor, and that's definitely going to help against the mid-game damage coming out from the World, the physical damage at least. Alright, well, uh, we'll have to see what Scandal looks to go for. He's got an early Treads Magic Wand, and I think just tanking up as much as possible early. Uh, you talk about the, the potential Shadow Blade build, but this to me looks like maybe just a straight BKB game. BKB wouldn't be bad, Shadow Blade wouldn't be bad either. I think he's just kind of just getting a feel of this game. For example, if he's left alone to push the mid tower, then most likely rushing straight into a Shadow Blade. I, I doubt that's going to happen. I say, say I say that though, the mid lane's completely empty because they're trying to gank up top. Yeah, and they're, they're trying but not going to succeed. There's a Dire Observer Ward in the perfect position to scout this rotation now then. Well, Silent knows uh, when, whether or not he's safe or not, unless they try and smoke past it or Nyx Assassin gets level 6, which is happening soon. Nyx, level 5.5, uh, could be looking at a gank fairly soon. Empire's got himself a haste rune. Radiant Team Dignitas don't actually scout this out, so... Nyx Assassin, 1437, just with some good map awareness. He's going to retreat off, not get caught out there, though, at the top lane. Yeah, Mag now bottom the bottom lane, and Kree Wave, again, <laughs> as always, and in front of his tower. That's not got his... Six. Yep. Is he still blocking that camp? Uh, it looks like it. I that have not seen is. it in some time, and... Keep it up to level 5, though, so I'm not going to be too worried about that. Mid lane, though, looks like stun yeah. is going to happen. Infinity dropping low, he's going to be able to blink back out, and 1437 does have the spike carapace. But here it comes, can we get a good vacuum? Vacuum is not going to be there, vacuum will not be there, only hits one, though. Scandal dropping low, Infinity walks back in, he's going to be dead immediately. Mag TP's back in, are we going to see a clockwork hook? Trying to get it, trying to get it, oh, misses. Oh. 
and illuminate stolen by a uh, fly dirt on the Rubik. I think he maybe would have preferred to have Chakram. Yes, he but would absolutely love to have Chakram magic. He's got Arcane Boot, so that's sort of the uh, the team mini Chakram, but. Uh, he doesn't get that. He gets the Illuminate, which is not too bad in its own right. It's just a level 2 Illuminate, though. But what a good fight at the mid lane for Empire. They get themselves two unanswered kills there. And important kills at that. Killing off the Queen of Pain and Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin still not level 6. And Queen of Pain, a hero just so important to just start snowballing on, not going to do so. Yeah, now another interesting uh, skill build coming out from Korok. Now leveling up Fervor. A spell that, again, good at level 1. Not too sure whether you want to level up really early. Uh, when you're not really going to be attacking the same target. What do you go for instead? Stats or? Stats? That's the build that uh, you turn on MB as well as Sing Sing go for. Because okay. Mana is actually an issue here on the, this particular hero. Gyrocopter gets a solo kill up top and 1437 continue to have struggles in this game. Yeah, he's had he's been playing a really, really poor game. And I'm sure he knows that as, as much as we do, as much as the viewers do. He's not going to be too happy with himself. 0 4 and 1, some very inexcusable deaths here. And well, we'll see Infinity grab himself an Illusion Rune. There's going to be a lot resting on his shoulders to turn this game around for Team Dignitas, but right now, they just Dignitas just don't have too many openings. Oh, they drop a ward up top, Infinity's going to blink away. I mean, Infinity, we talked about him dominating the lane, but it doesn't feel like he's having much of a control in this game, and yeah. that's definitely an issue, because here comes a push on the mid lane, and if you have a farm enough Queen of Pain, that push should never happen. Like, they're like, oh my god, a farm Queen of Pain, we can't push against that, but... Scando, as well as the rest of Empire, says, yeah, we definitely can. And he's only got 50, 54 CS on Queen of Pain to the 43 of DK, so it's only 11 CS advantage, and not too much separating these two heroes. Korok's actually going to be forced out of uh, bottom... Well, not really forced out. He decides he just wants to TP home, just saying it's not safe there. He goes home, by, picks himself up an Ogre Club. Looks like he's going to be rushing a PKB, but... It feels like even the Troll Warlord, a hero that's meant to dominate his lane, he's just been free farming. This would be better if it was a traditional hard carry troll, not sure if this is a hero that's going to be actually able to turn around the game, much like Queen of Pain. Yeah, I, I don't think you... I mean, Free Farm Troll Warlord, let's not disagree, is a very, very good thing for Dean yeah. Toss. But you could get something extra, you could get something more if Dean Toss picked a different hero. We still haven't seen any type of aggression from a lineup that consists of a Nyx Assassin, a Queen of Pain, and Troll Warlord, arguably a very powerful mid to early to mid-game hero. Uh, I mean, let's... Let's be honest here, Whirling Axis early game does a, a crap ton of damage on his melee and range form toggle. So, so far, nothing is happening. Empire, happy to play defensive, because they have heroes like Dragonite. They have heroes like Jarcrofter, who can take this game very well to in the mid to late game phase. Yeah, so. I, I think it's going to come like a... They've got the mech now on the Chen. They're actually going to go for a smoke game. But you look towards like a DK Chen lineup, you're always thinking mid-game pushing, around the 15 to 25 minute mark. Take as many out of towers as you can if you've got an advantage, and... That's what Empire have. They're going to go for a bit of a smoke, and if even if this fails, they can easily follow this up with just a standard T1 tower push on the bottom lane. Yeah, and Kalakor's already joining that spot, and I don't think Korok senses this coming. We're going to see Range Dragon form stun, and Korok, no way he's going to make it out there. Can he actually get his melee spin? Uh, it's going to try. The mech comes in here, and he's going to be fine. 60% slow. We're going to see a Sonic Wave that's going to hit on everybody. Good rotation coming. Hand of God slowly coming out. Are we going to have a spell steal? Nothing just yet here. Here comes Gyrocopter. On the back line, no call on being dropped. They are going to just get Zai. Yeah. I guess disaster averted, but with all of their ultimate down, I think Empire is going to get a tier 1 tower push. Or will there? Looks like we're going to have Nyx Sass coming back in. Stopping the send back here. Gets one kill. Really nicely played from 1437. Call down. That's going to hit on 1437. No, he jukes it, but into the bosoms of Scando. He gets picked off here. And Mag is missing slightly another hook. He's now going to be looking for PPD. PPD on the run. It looks like Mag maybe not going to be able to catch up. 365 movement speed to both of them. But it's the phase boots gyrocopter who is going to catch up. Infinity's here though. He's invis. He's got plenty of mana. Mag's caught up though. He's got a battery so on PPD. So that's an easy kill. And Infinity's going to just blink the hell out of there. And here's the tower push on bottom lane. I think it just goes to show Dignitas. Like they get... That was a perfect 3, 4, 5 hero. Queen of Pain scream and Sonic Wave. And no one died in it. Yeah. It was Hannah got a mech, Vance Rubik, I mean, Rubik was the one closest to dying with about 100 HP left, but ultimately dies for Nyx Assassin, but it's the Queen of Pain not able to get the kills there, and this is without Null Field. Null Field's going to be coming into play a bit later on. I don't even think he needs more in the Telekinesis. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a build that we see more commonly now, where you only de get Telekinesis during the laning stage, and once you exit the laning stage, you just put the point into Null Field. I mean, the chain having a longer duration uh, lift is always nice, but... Generally, it's just a first. It's used as yeah. a setup spell, right? You set up that Dragonite Sun, for example, in this case. So, as long as he gets his lift off, a level one lift is as good as a level four lift. The actual lift duration doesn't actually scale all that well. The thing that does a little bit is the stun duration, because when it when you land, it goes from like one second at level one to one point seven five, which is 
a potential 3 or 4 hero stun, but I think in general, Nelfield just offers a yeah, whole Yeah, but you mostly use that as a single target initiation, yeah. not a not an AOE yeah. disable. So. I totally attack. agree. And now we're going to see DK Scandal get very close to a BKB of his own. He's only level 9, so he's not really doing amazing here, but it just feels like, in general, he's Dyer's just done more than what he needs attack. to at the mid lane, considering he was against the Queen of Pain. I mean, Dragonite as a hero, like, he's, his damage output right now is so bad, like, but you can't ignore him, because he's throwing out Beastmaster Roars every second. That's that's yeah. the power of this hero. He's tanky, and you can't ignore it. So that's the prototypical tank that you want to have on your lineup. Alright, well, uh, Empire, once again, sort of slowing things down a little bit. They get the T1 bottom, they get themselves some more space, and uh, with this, they're looking at a gold lead of a bit over 5,000, so it's Dignitas on the back foot. And we're just 14, 15 minutes in the games. Games have been going pretty fast here, and uh, we play as well. I mean, just, I think in general, the meta game shifted so that around 15 to 20 minutes, it's getting pretty clear who's ahead, and if nothing happens in the next five minutes, they just flat out win by 25 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I, I feel like 1437 has a very decent draft here, but the team as a whole hasn't really played the draft well. Again, they're playing early to make game aggression without the early mid game aggression. Have we seen a single smoke gank out of uh, Team Dignitas just yet? I don't think so. They're going to try to get a tier 1 tower out of this Roshan exchange. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't even, I'm not even sure what are they... I mean, I'm pretty sure they now recognize that Roshan is happening, but there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, they have an idea that Roshan's going on. They don't, maybe don't know for sure. They may think they're getting smoke ganked or something, but it's... They can't contest it. They're going to be... They're too far away off the map, and they're just out of position and playing blind, whereas the Dire Team Empire have wards all over the map at Bottom River, in the enemy jungle. This one actually in Sentry Ward range, but hasn't been dewarded yet, and... The Radiant Team Dignitas has now put a ward up in this top lane, and very offensively in the jungle, but they're not actually really in a position to play that offensively. It looks like they want to go for this tier 2 tower, though. Oh, looks like Darkseer. Oh, oh gets land. caught out. What a hook! Yeah. The ones that missed earlier, doesn't matter when you hit a key one right there. They've got to get out of top lane. Fly's looking for a telekinesis. He's going to catch up 1437, who has no TP. Vendetta in 5. Impale stolen. Can they actually get up with some more fallout damage? DKC with a stun. There's Vendetta in 1 second. He's not going to get it off. That's a that's a key mistake by 1437. Generally, you don't give away your impale. You try to give away your Nyx Assassin impale. Like you, you, you just or sorry, Spike Carapace. You, you can't give away impale with a free casting animation. Infinity in big trouble if somebody decides to TP in here. Lift into impale. Infinity huge trouble right now. I'm yeah. gonna see rocket. Oh no! It's, if that was Dragonite, yeah. that would've been it. I was just about to say. I thought that was maybe Dragonite, but the Dragonite was just looking to rotate from the top lane. As uh, Queen of Pain will get out of that one. Needs to be careful though, still seeing in this jungle, looking for a BKB of his own on oh, Infinity, but there's still a bit of ways to go for that one. Keeper Light Illuminate gonna try and stall this push, but there's mech, there's enough of a creep armor here, and Keeper Light's next Illuminate gonna be coming shortly, but this is still just a level 2 Illuminate, so T1 Tower will go down in the middle lane. Yeah, I mean, this is. Look at how quickly the game has swung in the last two minutes. Empire got a Roshan kill, got a you know one or two kill pick off on the top lane, double BKB up now on Dragonite as well as on the Gyrocopter. They get a tier one, and to be completely honest, if they just want to roll down the mid lane and get tier two, they definitely can as well. 1437 is going to run to Dragonite. Dragonite could just turn around and fight him, but yeah. now he's going to be bottle crawling. Or, or with, uh, he could fight him, but he couldn't actually kill him, I guess. is, is That's the main true. Thing That's true. So he'd rather save his mana, because if he uses mana on spells and gets mana burn, he's suddenly zero mana and can't really offer a lot, but... Uh, we'll see. It looks like a swing towards bottom lane. They may be going for push. You know, Gyrocopter has other ideas. He wants to kill off this Ancient stack, so... Are they actually going to try and push bottom tier 2 without the Gyrocopter? They, <laughs> they might just do that. Empire are feeling really confident and a bit cocky here. Empire, I mean, last time when they played 4FC, they were playing 4v5 Dota and doing yeah. quite well, despite 4v5 Dota. By the way, with this uh, Helm first pickup, he was able to stack himself a ton of Ancients, and they're trying to get the Ancients, but they gotta defend their tier 1 towers. Don't give anything away for free. 14 to 7, trying to Vendetta under the tower and Slay Mail plus whoa, detection under the tower as well, and Empire will get that denied. Yep. Dignitas is just getting nothing. Yes, and Empire are just, it's not even, it's very calculated greed, like, they're not putting themselves in danger while being greedy, but they have ancient stacking going on, being unpunished, they're defending every tower, uh, they're getting kills when they defend towers as well, and not really giving up space for Dignitas to get much farm. Dignitas are just forced to play very conservative, and Korok is maybe looking for a bit of ancient stacking of his own, but he can't kill this off, and if this gets scattered out, Gyrocopter comes in and just takes it, the Radiant Ancients are just up, up there waiting to be taken, and Korok, no BKB still. Yeah, Dragon, I definitely could take it as well with his uh, now splashy level 11 ultimate form. Alright, well. 
Impale gonna come out from 1437. Uh, is it gonna get stolen again? He's actually already got Impale and maybe needs to go for a resale because his uh, Rubik also is about oh, to wear off. But they're just gonna straight up kill 1437? No. Flame Breath dodged by the Carapace. Yeah, that's fine. They drew him away. They really just want this tier 2 tower. Dragon Form gets run out. They want to get this tier, tower, tier 2 tower and get out of here. And Clockwork going north. He is going to run into that stack, I think. He should. They they see that. They see the stolen creep for the Helm of the Dominant. They should know what that creep's been up to. Or at least well, get a decent idea of it. Yeah, Fly, Fly's going to run through. Yeah, they're Once pinging the stack, Oh, no. They'll still. It's not. It's uh, just a double stack, but it's already a bit. Oh, sorry. It's a triple stack. As uh, Well, not a, a half triple stack. Unfortunately, the big creeps are the one that uh, hasn't been done yet, and yeah, Scandal's yeah. gonna take these ones. Well, that gets him even more fun. He's got BKB, he's got Helm the Dominator, and Scandal picking up that gem to help deal with that Nyx Assassin. Uh, Vayne's actually buying it on the Chen, and we'll see them with ease take down these Ancients. And uh, Dignitas, um, well, are they actually trying to fight this? 1437 gets scattered by Gem. What a hook shot from Magna! Cooldown is there! The Sonic Wave from the Queen of Pain does absolutely nothing. And Dignitas just melt here by their ancients, lose three. Queen of Pain and Keeper Light, the only two to survive. And that could be Rex. Scandal's range for him's back yeah. up. Why not? You get the uh, the corrosive attack coming out from the Elder Dragon form, and well, Dignitas do have time because actually this mid lane is uh, pushed well back here. So Dignitas did get this uh, creep equilibrium nicely positioned, but they're still playing just uphill Dota right now. They're going to have BKB on Queen of Pain shortly. Troll Warlord about 800ish away, but it's still some ways to go. Yeah, Team Empire is like, you know what, let's just farm top and buy respectively a ton yeah. of creep grill go here, so we'll take those. And 3,400 gold on silent. Eagle Song? I think Butterfly is the, the right way to go. Okay, fair enough. Definitely they definitely could wait damage. for four more minutes and, and get the Roshan there as well. There's no rush for Team Empire. I, don't, I mean, they could wait another 10, 15 minutes if they want. Their, their late game is far more impressive, and Dignitas are just getting some very late BKBs. They're going to need damage items to follow this up, and... Empire wait, they get some more, uh, they get a Shadow Blade on Scandal, they get start building towards an Assault Crest, they get damage on the, the Gyrocop, the BKBs don't mean anything to them, they've got tons of physical damage, they've got Hookshot as an initiation tool, and it, sure you can BKB once you, after the hook, but it feels like that's not going to be anywhere near enough. Yeah, I feel like Max item choice in this game is pretty good as well, he's going for Blame Mail first, and then probably either back into an Axe Scepter, uh, or a BKB. I think Blame Mail against Queen of Pain, against a Illuminate, and in certain cases, against a Troll Warlord that doesn't have BKB is very, very effective as an item choice. So he's definitely been uh, hooking in, popping his blade mail, and just forcing the entire Dignitas team to run because you definitely can't fight that. Well, Empire want this last out of tower. It looks like they're gonna TP the Chen towards the bottom lane, and with just one T2 tower up, they can grab that. They can grab Roshan maybe in about three minutes' time, take a few fights because they are looking sweet here right now. As uh, this is just game one though. Dignitas can look to bounce back, but Dignitas off to a slow start in their We Play Dota 2 campaign. Yeah. Losing a game to uh, 4FC, a team that they shouldn't be really losing yeah. to. Here comes Dragonite on the bot, using his range form, has the... Uh-oh, Korok. Uh -oh, Korok. They got a mech on the team, but... Korok's uh, pushing Korok. out. Yeah. I'm surprised that Scandal even attack out of his... Uh... Whoa, Sonic Wave from Rubik. And there's your hook shot. Actually, can you just hit creep waves here? Mag not going to quite catch on as much as he'd like to. And without a full stuff, there's no way to really get him in any closer. But Scandal's got another stun. He stuns himself on the carapace, but that doesn't really matter. It looks like oh, nice blinding light from the keeper light will keep them alive, but it forces out a mech as well. So this will be a simple tower for Empire to take. Nothing will really stand in their way. And Rubik may just catch up keeper the light. No more gets tossed back, and well, that's it. Blame mail gonna get popped and trying to steal the kill through there. Well, they, I, I think with Keeper of the Light and Troll Dead, they do push the high ground. They're not going to get Raxes, I don't think, but they can at least do some decent damage. And maybe with a pick up or two, if Dignitas try and fight this, they do get Raxes. Yeah, Dragon Form is running out, and there's Glyph Protection still available, or Backdoor Protection. So I think Empire should back off, TP up top, farm that wave, uh, TP mid, farm that wave, and go Roshan. There's no reason to actually go for this, but they do. They feel very confident. Yeah, Chen steals a range creep. Good on you, Chen. Next for damage. <laughs> hook shot. Hook, hook. That's oh. gonna catch. Oh, 1437. Back in, back out. The wall gets dropped as well. Pretty good defense coming out, but it's a wall stolen. Wall now gets dropped on 1437. He is dead. Huge Sonic Wave is gonna come through. Mag drop, we know. Hand of God. After a buyback from Chen, well played there on this card. But where's the Gyrocopter? Where's the Dragonite? Well, Gyrocopter popped his BKB and was in the back line, trying his best to avoid the wall of Replica. It was kind of like two separate mini squirmishes there. The, the Chen, the support, was fighting with the Queen of Pain. Meanwhile, the Gyrocopter was just chasing down with the DK. They killed off the Nyx Assassin. And uh, it, it's not a horrible fight for Dignitas, but they still don't achieve enough. They just get the one kill there. 
they're just not really getting enough damage dealt and, and having enough damage output with the Queen of Pain, with the Troll Wallet as well. They just can't actually finish off heroes. Yeah, I'm not really sure whether Team Empire should struggle and continue with this push. They're going to try one more time with Empire going in. If, as soon as they see the Starks are popping his head out, they're going to go for it. Mag now looking for Angle to initiate in as well. Lightning Light's going to push him back, but the Clockwork Hook is going to find 1437. Oh no, 1437 getting caught out all day long. But what? Mech and Forsaf, he's going to be okay. Yeah, alright. Oh, he's going to die to a flak though. The full stuff from the Dark Side. I thought he was like some cogs, but like weird little bug there where he just suddenly wasn't in the cogs. But he was full stuffed out there by the Dark Side. So a nice little save. And they still got this range from on Dragon Knight. So it looks like they do want to do some more damage to this T3 tower top. Tower and they should be able to do so with these scandals just to ignore the tower and go looking for an initiation behind it. Ends up just taking out the creep wave. We'll get this tower now. And no Dark Side wall for 10 seconds. So it looks like at least the tower will go down here. Nick's going to TP in with the Carapace. BKB gets popped by Scandal. He doesn't even have to worry about the Carapace. Easy kill on 1437, and this is deja vu. So many times 1437 just TP in the horrible positions. He's 10 of these 18 deaths on Dignitas' side. Oh no, Drax is now fully exposed. Zai looking for a wall vacuum, but he's gonna get stunned up. BKB comes out, the wall gets dropped from the Rubik. That's gotta be it. Nail Rax is gonna get taken down, and I think a GG call is gonna come out. I, I, that was a good series of defense coming out from Team Dignitas, but it was just. Once you get your high ground broken in like that, there's no way you make the comeback. Empire are really good right now. This is a team who always, like, they seem to always go through, like, these really strong periods where they're playing amazing, but it never comes, like, at the right time. It's never when there's a big land tournament coming up. It's never, like, when TI3 was coming up. Um, they've never done, like, really well with a dream hack or anything, but they've had periods where they dominate online tournaments. It seems like they're in a really good period of dominance right now. Yeah, I mean, right now they are in a group where Dean's House is not looking strong. 4FC is not a team that you... C winning TI3. So I don't think, sure, they're winning game, but these are the games that they're supposed to win. I think. Hey, they beat Kaipi. They did beat Kaipi. That's, that's, I think that's the bigger accomplishment. I, I think I look towards Empire making out of this group stage and then doing well in replay. And then we could preserve our comment then whether they are in that stage of dominance. All right. Well, game one is, is done. Empire get themselves a 3 0 lead in this group B. They're sitting absolutely fantastic. Dignitas, they haven't picked up a win yet, but they're going to look to do so in game two, which will be coming up after a short break. Stay tuned, guys.